What was it like working with Eric? Because you have a number of scenes with him and like seeing him. I don't really. I really work with him in episode one. Right. I work with him a couple of times in episode one, and um, which I was sad about because I actually did a movie with Eric years and years ago, mm. and. Um, yeah, we did this film. Well, he was played the lead in it, and I played a small part. We um, did the film together. <laughs> yeah, totally. In a film called The Other Bling Girl, and so I was so excited to work with him again. And then, um, because Veronica can't stand John with such deep hatred, <laughs> she like, repels him. Um, we only have a few episodes. Uh, only have a few scenes in the first episode. But what is it like seeing him, like acting with him, being so creepy and all that stuff? And then, like they yell cut, and you're kind of like, ugh, or like. Well, I think that for me, it's also been the experience of watching it. All this stuff that I wasn't a part of getting to watch, you know, this extraordinary nuanced performance from Eric and this beautifully kind of honest performance from, from Connie. It's so amazing to watch the two of them, but also to watch it where you're seeing Connie see the good bit and then, you know, a moment later you see a cutaway of Eric actually being the real version and it's quite sure. like, it's left me feeling quite uneasy at home too it's yeah. like but i think you know it's also a really interesting subject matter in my opinion too of it of of you know this guy who is obviously really not well and he is able to steal drugs to buy guns and so it's also you know kind of a crazy um you know, I mean, I know it's a show about romance and kind of betrayal, and um, but it's also an, an example of like how those things can fall into the hands of the wrong person. Right. And you know, when they're mentally unstable like that, God knows what they're going to do. So there had to be some pressure going into this. It was such a beloved podcast. Yeah. And then to have it be so well received like it is, and mm -hmm. with so many viewers and. Everyone is just raving about it. How great does that feel? Yeah, I mean, it feels amazing. Yeah, and I and I think um, uh, I think it's really really great that it has I don't know reached so many people because I know um, some people won't have listened to the podcast yet either, so they don't know what's happening and what where it's going to go. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm so it, I mean, it's so great to be a part of something that people are enjoying like that. Yeah. How do you think John would feel about the popularity of his story? Wow, drop a bomb like that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He was a complicated, very unstable human. Um, I don't know if he would like the attention or if it would be too much exposure for him. I have no idea. But I think he was truly a sociopath. Yes. Um, which I am not, so I don't understand the, the mind of a sociopath. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how he would feel about it. I mean... I think he's such a true narcissist that there's a part of him that would love it. See, I think it's deeper. I think he's a sociopath, which I think is really dangerous. He, I yeah. think he really does not have empathy for anybody. and. Um, those kind of people are, are, are really dangerous. Clearly. Because not being able to understand other people's human emotions, even when it's so clearly wrong what you're doing to somebody. Um, so I actually, uh, I think it's a good thing that he was, uh, you know, um, made a sensation like this now, not when, because I don't know what that would have done to him. I don't know. You, if you give a true sociopath power, who knows what will well, happen.